Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back to do a book review for Dark Theory by Wick Welker. Now this one is one chunky chunky book, and it's heavy, so I'm going to put it down and just put up the picture for the rest of the review. So this science fiction book is set many years in the future. There has been heights of technology and Earth is now in a period where it's not quite like living in the Middle Ages, but they are living with a lesser technology and not as much connectivity between one another. And this book starts off with Miri finding a robot in the local junkyard where where she and Lucindy go scavenging for materials to then sell at the market so then they can eat. And Mary is all for scrapping this robot. However, she thinks she saw some flickering of life and Lucindy stops her. She says, no, wait, let's find out if the robot is alive and the robot's alive and the robot is self-aware. In this world, not all robots are self-aware. So Lucindy ends up saving this robot named Beatro. And Beatro starts helping them in the junkyard. Beatro has amnesia, has no memory of who he is or where he came from, only has the directive find Galliaro and doesn't know who Galliaro is. And so works alongside Miri and Lucendi for a while until the local government has a hostile takeover and Lucindy meets an unfortunate end. This is kind of the driver for Beecho for the rest of the book is he is going forth to find his maker, who he assumes is Galliero, and trying to figure out if the kindness and consideration that Lucindy imprinted on him is who he is or is not who he is. Should he follow it? Should he not? you get a lot of existential crisis from this robot. And then we have Miri, who has a complicated past that she is trying to forget. She is also affected by the death of Lucindy, but in a different way. For her, it kind of sharpens her to go after the goal she had before she had met Lucy. And we meet some other characters along the way, like Ribcage, who's a street child, Aram, who is from an underground bunker, Hawara, who is from the future past, is what they call it. Yeah, it, we have some very diverse characters. I think that Wick Walker does a very good job mixing technology of the future with like some fantasy elements. Like, reading this, I can see that anybody who reads purely fantasy and is wanting to dip their toes into science fiction, that this would be a great crossover book for them because you still get those kind of fantasy elements. I mean, they're going on a quest for goodness sake, pretty much, but you still get that technology intermixed with the story. And the technology does play a part. Wick Welker is very good. There's no wasted props in this book. If it's there, it's going to have a reason for it. And I think my biggest complaint about this book is it is a chunker. And I find that for me myself, as I've grown older, I'm not so interested in reading really long, thick books. I like the shorter books that are easier to finish in a week. This took me like three and a half weeks, I think, to read it because I read physically. And I usually read before I go to bed. And this thing, I know I have the picture of, but... This thing is not easy to read while you are trying to, like, sleep or trying to lay in bed preparing to go to sleep. So, like, the length of it is my biggest one. But also there were some, like, moments where the action died down, which I think that it would have been better if the author had split the book into two. And I'm thinking of the Gargantuan Forest, I think coming upon that, that would have been a great place to stop the book, you know, book one and then start book two with the events from there. 
because they feel like two separate halves of the book. But again, that could just be me being crabby because it's such a thick book. You do have a full character arc for, for all the characters in this long book, which I still think could have been done. It's split into two. And Wick Walker did do something that I'm not a big fan of in books, is where he introduced some characters who actually affect the plot in the later half of the book. We're past the midway point, and oh, hey, here are some new characters. I'm not a big fan of that. Again, I would have preferred having this book split into two, and then you, uh, book two, you introduce these characters. That would have been fine for me. This is, remember, reviews are very subjective, and they're coming from the reader. In no way is Welker a bad writer. This is a very compelling book. It's very well written. I'm nitpicking here. Sorry. <laughs> Something else I didn't like as well is I don't like when a story, you start in one place, and then for the end of the book, you end up in the same place. For me, it would have been like, well, why can't the whole story just have happened in that one place? Why did they have to go away in order to come back? And again, that's when it's in a single book. If it's in a series, no, I'm fine with it. But in a single book, I'm like, what's going on here? I think Welker is very good at writing his characters. Beecher was always thinking of why am I here? What's my purpose? That got a little bit old, but I think that I had the most fun with Mary, who at the beginning of the book, I didn't like her. I thought she was annoying and her, the decisions she was making were just dumb. But when you get that full arc and realize all the trauma that she has suffered in her life, all of a sudden, all the dumb decisions that she's making make sense because it falls in with her worldview and her being a survivor at all costs. And by the end of this book, she really was one of my favorite characters. I think Wick Walker does some interesting things with technology and how different groups of people will have different levels of technology or will use technology in different ways. Like, for example, Mary and Lucy at the beginning, they're, they're scavenging in a junkyard for leftovers of what has come from before to meeting the reticulum, which is guided by a self-aware AI who's trying to recreate her past to Aram and his underground home. The technology that they do use and don't use is very interesting. Then to meeting the relics and remnants of the Alchian technology that is dotted around this planet. So I really like how Welker uses myths and like, oh, we have this myth here and this is what everyone is saying. And then when you start to get more information, you're like, oh, no, this isn't exactly correct. And this is how it would be different. So it was an interesting look at how myths can guide a people, but they can also misinform people about what actually happened in the past. So overall, I really enjoyed this book. I am excited that it's moving on in the semifinals and can't wait to find out what the other teams think of it. If you have read this book down below, I would love to know. I know that I definitely had heard more about this book before getting it in the contest, just around the booktube verse. So it's possible you have read it. And if you have, again, I'd like to know your thoughts down below. Thank you and have a great day.